Good morning, Saints. Welcome to our service today at Spirit Word Ministries. Hallelujah. Had some rain last night. The crops will love it. I'm sure the grass will love it too and everything else. But it's clearing up now. It's a beautiful day that He has made from the foundation of the world. We do rejoice and we are glad in it. We're going to be doing part 23 of our teaching, How to Cast Out Devils, on the 16th day of July. Amen. 2023. How to Cast Out Devils, part 23. Now, if you have your Bibles, kindly turn to um, the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 23 and 24, and we're going to get into that verse in a moment. <clears throat> we had left off last week when we were talking about dropping down. We are talking about addictions, and we got into smoking, drinking, alcohol. A lot of these are grouped up, gambling, sexual vices, adultery, fornication, A to Z genders, identities, same-sex issues, porn. So we covered, you know, a big gambit last week. Okay, this today we're going to start out with prescription drugs and talk about pharmacia briefly. Okay, and that's why henceforth this verse that we're going to cover. Then all kinds of painkillers and other noxious, uh, you know, drugs like fentanyl, uh, oxycodone, heroin, coke, weed. Then some other ones that everybody's involved with. You may say, well, that's not me. Okay, take your immunized shot so it never becomes you. Okay, uh, we'll cover some things that may cover you, such as food, you know, that gluttony realm, and nutritional products. How's that one? That can be a bondage just as much as anything else. Nothing wrong with it, but, you know, whenever you take things, make sure you do it all in the name of Jesus first. Then we'll cover a general category of sleep, uh, unforgiveness or sleeplessness as well, fear of loss. All traumas, fear of the future, like job, government policy decisions, you know, any new shots that may come out, the digital currency, climate change issues, and all that. So we're, that's all going to be in a nice little pile. <clears throat> when we're done with that, we're going to go right back to the binding and loosing sheet. Okay, so we're going to pick it up right where we finished with this and do more binding and loosing. And many times on the things that we did the drop down to, with as well. So you can do both. Can bind and loose and cast out the spirits, uh, like we'll do after this, and also you can drop down and get rid of them that way as well. Doing it both ways is fine. The more times you can punch out the devil, the better. Hallelujah. <coughs> as with the last three or four sessions, we talked about the third prong of Christ's uh, coming to the earth. He came here perfect. He died on the cross and became imperfect with our imperfectness. Amen. If there's such a word. He became one with our fallen state in every possible capacity. He came into union with it, but as a perfect sin offering, he was sinless himself. And then on the third prong is a day of grace that, in the age that we're living in today. That we're to be as Christ is today. You're to see yourself one with him. He's the head. You're his body. Everything Christ is, you are today in him, as him. Okay, everything he's not, as you know, on the reverse side, you're not as well. In other words, if Christ doesn't have disease, you don't have disease. Okay, if he doesn't have sin, you don't have sin. If he doesn't have this particular problem, you don't have that particular problem. Well, it sir, sure seems like I do, Pastor, because you bought into the illusionary lie that Satan was able to contemplate before you, because he can orchestrate circumstantial, natural evidence to give you an appearance that it's real. But it's not real. The Word of God is absolute truth and reality, and it dominates this natural world if you will put pressure on it. So everything that he you know, is today in his perfected state, so are you in this world. So, it, again, I always use this example, and it's the best one because we all can identify with it. <clears throat> we always say, if somebody dies and does not receive Christ Jesus the Lord upon his leaving this planet, and he goes to hell for eternity, he, they went there for nothing because Jesus already died for them. He put their name in the Lamb's book of life. He was not imputing their trespasses unto them, the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. So they went there based on their own volition and they took themselves out of the Lamb's book of life. That's the love that, of our Father because he w never envisioned that any sane person would reject so great a love and salvation that he gave you on a silver platter in Christ Jesus. Amen? So we can identify that. That's easy to say. 
But then everything that we go through in this natural life has to go back to the original statement that God made in Genesis. I made you in my image and likeness as I am today, and you have dominion to keep it that way. Get it? He gave you dominion over all the earth to keep it that way. So every time something comes against the MO of God, which is at the fact that you have been made in his image and likeness as he is now, and or as you are now in Christ, according to 1 John 4, 17, you're to use your authority and dominion to keep it that way. And if you do are not disciplined enough to, to get that thing down, then you're gonna it's gonna you're gonna it's gonna cause you frustration and defeat in life unnecessarily when you didn't have to go through it at all. Always bring things back to truth. Always bring things back to the Word. Always bring things back to absolute reality. <clears throat> then the natural world, which was created by a higher authority and reality, well then what? The natural world will submit, bow its knee, and become subservient to your request and change to the new reality of what you truly are in Christ. You've got to continue to do that. Now, I, I, I preach that every week, but then we go through a whole week of seven days. All these challenges come up and our mouths are flying off the handle about this, that, and the other thing about what you're going through. See, it's still here, mental ascent. It's got to come out of your spirit, man, out of your heart, out of your belly, that it's real. And refuse to you know, receive anything contrary to what your identity is in Christ today. Okay? I don't care if it's a symptom on your physical body. I don't care if it's a bill in the mail. I don't care if it's a, a, a you know, a, your, your boss has gone bonkers at your workplace. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't care, you know, what orchestration the enemy's trying to interimpose against you. You take authority over it. If it's any addictions, does Christ have that addiction? No. Now, if Christ had that addiction, you would have that addiction. Because everything he is, you are today in him as he is now. Okay? It's that simple. Don't make it complicated. Well, I've got a problem with my kids doing this, my son or my daughter doing that. Well, you know, if Christ had his children down here, and we're all his children, right? Would he have that problem? No. So then you really do not have that problem. Use your dominion and your authority to get rid of that problem, because as he is now without that problem, so are you in this world without that problem. Now, it sounds so easy on Sunday morning, doesn't it? <clears throat> but the minute we say yay and amen and we close the service at the end, that's when church really starts. When it's just you and this natural world and the reality that it tries to portray against you. Our job as ambassadors in Christ are to be the uh, facilitators and the purveyors of his truth exalting his word on pillars okay of solid gold because that's what he is we are the very righteousness of god and you can dominate this world dominate the laws of sin and death and get yourself to such a place in christ that you will work the works of jesus as he was here in this world because he said so he said in john 14 12 not only will you do all of the miracles that i've done each and every one of them including casting out devils Raising the dead, you know, walking on water. But he said even greater than these. Why? Because he's taken that sin nature out of you now. And now you're on an even keel with him, in union with him. He expected you to walk as a superman or woman from the get-go, but it's not easy because we had to get our mind renewed to what happened on that great day we got saved. We got saved, then it takes a lifetime to find out what you got. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alrighty. Now, let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 18. And we're going to talk about pharmakia. Now, if any of you have a strong concordance, I'll just let you know. Under the number of 5331, it gives you the breakdown. It starts out with the word sorcery. We're not going to get complicated here, but I just want you to have this information. Hallelujah. So it's defined as sorcery under Strong's Concordance in the Greek New Testament concordance section. And it talks about pharmakia and what that means. 
and it you know elicits all kinds of things, all types of drugs, whether they be prescription, you know, uh, you know illegal drugs, any type of thing that would capture your soul and dominate and govern your body. Pretty serious, isn't it? Now, if you look at Revelation 18, verse 23, and it's talk about how Babylon got overthrown. Babylon's the great city of commerce that pretty much ran the world. A lot of people think that it, it's the Babylon that's over into the old world where Nebuchadnezzar ruled and reigned, okay? Other people think that great Babylon city now is the United States. Um, I don't think I, you know, would submit to that because there's other things that sort of push away from that. But in the middle of this verse, in verse 23, <clears throat> it says this, For the merchants were the great men of the earth, for by their sorceries, meaning the people that were running the world system, whether it be the European common market, the WHO, you know, all these top dog agencies, okay, that govern health and wholeness, <clears throat> And for by their sorceries or by their pharmakia, okay, their drugs, that covers a multitude of things, not just scripts, but vax and everything else, right? Were all the nations deceived. Get that word deceived there? They didn't, they didn't say that, you know, oh boy, that was a great idea. Let's come into compliance with it. That's not what it says. They were deceived and seduced by getting taken in by it. Okay, how many people do you know actually bought the, you know, the, the Pinocchio that w what we should have been doing these last two and a half, three years? They actually got sucker punched by the enemy. Okay, it says it right here, all nations were deceived. So just because the world system was run by the God of this world, Satan in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, doesn't mean that you're supposed to just simply say, oh gee, oh well. No, you're the dominator here. You're the one in control. You're, you determine what, what is right and what is wrong, what you know, you're know you going to do and what you're not going to do. He's, the devil's not the one in control. You are. And verse 24 goes on to say this. And in her, meaning the people that were propagating this insanity over all nations, okay, was found the blood of the prophets and the saints, many Christians, died or will be dying in the future because of their exercising of this manipulation over the, over the nations of pharmacia and drugs. <coughs> and all of them that were slain of the saints and all of them that were slain upon the earth. Those are people who were not even saints or born again Christians. Now, I, you know, before the service I just happened to glance over in Book of Revelation chapter 6 and 9 where it talks about where one quarter of the world are, are going to die of, by the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Then in chapter 9 talks about, you know, another set of vials that'll be, and bowls that'll be poured out upon the earth. And I'm going to tell you, one of the big ones is, is covering this, of how people are going to die. Another one is getting rid of the food supply. So again, you have to be astute, you have to be on top of things. And those are some of the things that we're going to take authority over. Now, what I'm telling you about this, if, if, you got, if, you, if you had submitted to this, we can drop down and get you unsubmitted to this. Okay? In other words, potentially cured by the power of God's hand. Okay? Also, by doing what we're going to do right now, by dropping down and taking your divine immunization shot, It'll protect you from any future things that you don't have to get from the natural side, which has by design, you know, very uh, many times catastrophic potentialities and side effects. <coughs> so, the first group that we're going to cover, I, I want to keep things in grouping of four. And if you remember that, we're going to talk about prescription drugs of any sort that you're on. I'm not saying that they're wrong, but they're wrong if you're not including the name of Jesus before you take it should always bless it and take every negative side effect that's inside of that script and cancel it and neutralize it so it doesn't destroy your physical body or your organs or change your DNA. Then anybody who's in bondage to fentanyl, or you may know somebody else who is, okay? And you may, you may know nobody, but you know 100,000 people are dying. 
you know, in this country, or maybe even more now every year. So pray for them who are suffering. Pray for people who are on painkillers like oxycodone and all them. And they're stuck on them. It, you know, started easy to get rid of a little bit of pain, but then they got hooked on them. And now they can't get off of them, and it's draining their life source away from them. So number one, you got prescription drugs, and as a grouping, let's, you know, for sake of time, let's put together fentanyl as, as number two, along with painkillers, including oxycodone and anything else out there, okay? Hallelujah. Let's throw in the next, uh, next one in the second category, heroin. How about coke, cocaine, any type of weed? Everybody goes, oh, what's wrong with weed? The new weed's not the 1960 or 70 weed. This one here is 10 times more addicting and it causes much more trauma in your soul and your system and your mental processes, okay? So let's look over that grouping again. Got prescription drugs is one, one dot. Fentanyl, okay, and painkillers, oxycodone, heroin and coke or weed, that's all in the second dot. Any type of psychedelics or anything that are an illegal drug, okay? Then the third dot, <clears throat> let's put in there food, okay, includes gluttony. And the fourth one, nutritional products that you overindulge in, but then you haven't taken it to Christ first. Nothing wrong with nutritional, better that than the scripts get granted. But uh, anything without the name of Jesus involved or him in, you know, involved in your situation is, is a bondage and probably um, idolatry to a degree. So let's, let's get started. So again, as we've done in past teachings in the last three, four weeks, get a picture of Christ as a noonday sun as it was described here in the book of Revelation. I'm going to turn there to chapter 1 again since we're already in the book of Revelation where John saw him. And I'm going to drop right to the scripture where it says in verse 17, um, actually 15, And his feet were like fine brass as they were burned in a furnace, and his voice upon the sounds of many waters. And remember, out of your belly shall flow rivers, plural, of many waters. And these rivers go into all the areas that we're talking about, and they heal and cure those situations. Amen. Verse 16. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, which is the word of God, and his countenance, or his vigils, or how, he, how you see him, was as the sun shineth in its strength, or as the noonday sun. Nobody can look at the sun for more than a half a second without burning your retina out. But that's how Jesus was in his countenance. So that type of brilliance, that type of glory, that type of anointing that's standing before you <clears throat> is where we're placing these dots upon. Now these dots represent these evil spirits. Okay, so the first dot, okay, remember what, you know, what we were talking about here. The first dot is all prescription drugs. All of them. Okay, again, nothing wrong with taking them, but if they've got you hooked, we need to get a miracle and get you off of them and have God... Uh, kill your physical body. You stay on them until the doc tells you to come off of them, however, because you don't want to do something under presumption. Because I don't know where you are in your faith. I don't know where you are in your drop-down technique. I don't know if you've done it, do it ten times a day like I'm asking you to. You may do it once and say, I guess I'm all set. Get off your scripts and then, you know, you, you run into a problem. If you're diligent and you do it ten times a day, you do it for two, three, four weeks, whatever, then there's a good chance you can go back to the doctor and say, what do you think? They'll give you some tests on it to see if you still need to take it or not, and then you can make an adjustment, okay? <clears throat> so for the first dot, about the size of a pinhead, will be you know, all prescription drugs. The second dot, again, if it's not you, it's somebody out there, so, you know, send forth your faith for them. Fentanyl, all painkillers. That includes Tylenol, too. Ibuprofen, Advil, all those, you know, crutch ones. Also, oxycodone. Yeah, this is still part of that second dot. Heroin, cocaine, weed, of, of all sorts. All right? That's the second one. The third dot is food. 
gluttony. Okay? Where it's got you dominated and you cannot be, I mean, you just be 24-7 and you your mind is locked in, that means there's a bondage there. Nothing wrong with eating two, three meals a day, but, you know, if you're eating in between there, you're eating all day. Okay? That's a spirit that needs to be destroyed. <clears throat> okay? And number four, nutritional products. I love them. I'm a, I subscribe to them. In fact, I ran a health store. Okay? I take them myself. But anything that you take without using the name of Jesus first is not only a bondage, it's idolatry. Because you've made yourself your own God and Lord over Jesus. Every, take everything to him first. Say, Father, I'm taking this in the name of Jesus, and you are my own very own righteousness. Remember how we did that with smokers? Every time you take a puff, puff, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. You blow a weed, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus the Lord. Before you know it, God's going to take the want to out of you. Okay? Hallelujah. So that fourth one, nutritional products, that's the fourth dot. So now, take your hands and put them on your belly. The next step is close your eyes. Remember those verses I told you, out of your innermost being shall flow a wellspring of life. And, and you know, living waters, plural. Okay. Out of your innermost being shall flow the substance of all salvation. Remember that one? Salvation comes out of your belly. That's your total deliverance. Amen? So, put your hands and expect the glory to start flowing out of your hands. Now, you have to believe that third prong. That's why I told you everything springboards off of that. Do you see yourself as Christ? Then if you do, these are not just normal hands. These are Christ's hands that you're laying on top of your belly. And the glory and the healing and the anointing flow shall flow out of your hands into inside your, inside your belly, which is your spirit, man. Your spirit is inside your belly. And the rivers of water are already starting to get churned up. Christ is getting ready to delegate where they're going to. You're going to have one river for the first one, prescription drugs, another one for all the illicit drugs, okay? A third one for the food issue, and then the fourth river will be for nutritional products. So close your eyes. Amen. Now picture either a big circle inside of you that's like the sun in the sky, a brilliant sun, S-U-N, but it's really the S-O-N, Jesus. Or if you can, get a picture of Jesus himself, like John saw him, where his countenance was just stupendous. Now see all four of those dots, okay, going across horizontally, laying on top of the, the brilliance of that circle, of the glory that's in that circle. Now just watch them get roasted in there. I mean, they're just starting to already break up those four black dots. Now they're starting to get, you know, lighter and more grayish. They're getting more fragmented. They're losing their constituency and constitution and substance. They're getting even more good. Now they're off-white. They're breaking up. See, all four break up. Look at them. Look at them inside of your your inner eye. See them breaking up? Okay. Now they're off-white. Okay, now they become almost indistinguishable to the glory white light and white light that you're seeing. And those dots are now being consumed because they're, they're fragmenting almost like sand. They've lost their ability and their tentacles that were inside of you. Christ Jesus, the Lord, has taken them away. And now we invite the Prince of Peace to give us a note of victory inside of us. Christ, who's the evictor of these evil things that he's already paid the price for, goes inside of your spirit and evicts them and pulls them up by the roots. See him doing that, all four dots by the roots. Everything's gone. And start taking those deep breaths. Hallelujah. Those breaths mean it's an, like a, it's that peace dominating you. It's like those spirits are coming out. Sometimes coughing ensues. <clears throat> You're expelling demonic hosts. Hallelujah. We, and with thanksgiving. The, the clincher. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for doing it for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Thank you, Lord God, that you've done this for me. And you've done it for them, for people that we don't know that are hooked on fentanyl, that are dying all over the country. These tent cities over in San Francisco and the squalor and the filth of this homelessness, hopelessness too. Lord, deliver all these people in Jesus' name. Deliver, Lord God, deliver. For they too have been made in your image and likeness. Now they need your salvation. Hallelujah. I see all those bondages break up. See them all. See them all. Okay, see them all. Okay, now see the food bondage break up. Big time. Any gluttony, uncontrollable appetite. See that break up and fragment. That's got. That's being pulled up by the roots. Does Christ have food issues and gluttony? No. So neither do we or I. Because we are in them as he is now. Nutritional supplements. See that one's starting to break up as well. For Jesus is our sufficiency. <clears throat> Amen. He's our nutritional supplement. We take gas pills. Okay, we don't have to take the natural world pills or pharmacia. We take gas pills. Now you just keep thanking the Lord. What I normally do after this, even on my own time when I do this, I take authority over pharmacia, sorcery, unfriendly bacteria, fungi, parasites, ticks, okay, anything, all viruses. I take care of all GMO issues, any RMNA technology that got into the food supply or shedders. And I bind them up, bind their eyes, their ears, their mouth, and I loose them and I cast them out into a dry and desert spot not to hinder humankind again. Now receive that for yourself. And thank the Lord. 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 <coughs> by the way, you'll save a ton of money by doing this. Hallelujah. <sighs> good God there. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. God is good. Keep the Right now your belly's sending out those rivers. Rivers are destroying and sweeping away all remnants in your soul of prescription drugs. The next river's taking away all painkillers, the fentanyl thing, the oxycodone thing. Okay? It's taking away all heroin, coke, weed issues. That river's sweeping them all away. The third river is the food one, gluttony, uncontrollable appetite. It's sweeping away that one. And the fourth river is taking away all the <clears throat> nutritional supplement bondage. It's not wrong to take it. It's wrong with, if it's a bondage and you haven't made Jesus Christ first place in your life while you're doing it. Take it, everything, in the name of Jesus. And when you do, say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. That is good. That was a good one. Alrighty, let's go to the next category, general. Believe it or not, once we get done with this section, we're done for the drop-down purposes of this segment of our Casting Out Devils series. So under the general category, I have unforgiveness, and believe me, a lot of people have that. Unforgiveness is the yoke together with offenses. <clears throat> people get offended at other people. Why? I have no idea. Because it's Christ offended? No. Did he forgive us all? Yep. Even told his tormentors and crucifiers, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So you're now going to hold a grudge against somebody whom God has already pre-forgiven and whose names are potentially written in the Lamb's Book of Life forever? Got to be careful with that one. You may have unforgiveness towards yourself. Okay, You cannot forgive yourself for some of the stupidity things that you've done. So the condemnation gets in through that unforgiveness. Okay, you may have an unforgiveness towards God. Well, why don't you come through for me? Why don't you heal me? That person died on me. Okay, or that person uh, didn't get you know, better. <clears throat> or you didn't come through me and paying that bill. Or fighting, you know, the system in this way or that way. Okay, and, and so you're frustrated. And you have an offense towards God. Paul said that's a very bad thing to do. He goes, I live my life having an offense-free attitude and a conscience void offense towards God and all men. 
And by having that, his heart was clean. Now he can hear from God. A lot of people who can't hear, they're offense-minded, and they're, it's in there somewhere, they just don't know it. We're going to get rid of it. See, the best part of this stuff is it gets rid of things that you don't even know that you got. Okay? Some people take a bath or a shower to get rid of something. You know, they may have been digging the flowers and their knees got dirt, so you're in there scrubbing the dirt off there, but the rest of that shower or bath got rid of other dirt that you didn't even know about. It came, on, it came with the package of the shower or the bath. Jesus is that bath. Jesus is that shower. Okay? He's the bath. <clears throat> so he's going to be taking things out of you that you don't even know that you have. That's why I love him. Hallelujah. He always has our best interests at heart. So unforgiveness is a big one. Now, if you do have unforgiveness, it also brings torment. Spirits, you know, usually come along with those and just torment you into oblivion because you never have that peace. They claim that most cancers are always attached to unforgiveness towards God or man. Somebody did a study on that and got published and then they got peer-reviewed somewhere. I don't know where. This is back 25 years ago I heard about this. And um, they connected to most cancers, 99% maybe, were directly linked to unforgiveness. Now, is it worth holding that grudge? It put you into the grave, not them. While you're in the grave, they go by and they wave at your tomb. Say, How you doing down there? <clears throat> Didn't hurt them, it hurt you. It's not worth holding a grudge against. Amen? The devil's trying to get you to hold a grudge because he doesn't want you to be truly God's image and likeness. Christ doesn't have any unforgiveness. So therefore you can't and therefore you do not. Now if he did have unforgiveness, you would have it too because you're one body. <clears throat> That's why I always go back to that third prong. So if you do have unforgiveness, you're going to have what I call sleeplessness. You just don't, you just can't get a good night's sleep for one reason or another. Your spirit and your soul is, is, is troubled. You've taken some care upon it. You've taken some stress, <clears throat> fear and anxiety in there somewhere. It got in there and it's disturbing your sleep, which is a blessed thing from the Lord. Sleep sets your body and your rump sleep into where you can get healed during the night by God. And if the devil can interfere that cycle of how we're supposed to live, then, you know, he's troubled you and he's taken away by putting it in you, you know, death. He put a little bit of death in you. And remember, the devil's a very patient cuss. He'll spend a whole lifetime with these little insignificant things that you think of. But then instead of you living to be 120, it's now 118, then it's 115, <clears throat> then it's 105, then it's 100 years old. Now we're down to 90, 80, 70, 65. You know, what happened? <clears throat> All these little incidentals that you let fly by. Okay, and those were those little bit of deaths that were triggered inside you that are now taking root and are bringing even more death. Because they always bring more of a fruit and harvest. Time to get them out. This is what we're doing. This is what this is about. <clears throat> sleeplessness. The scripture says he gives his beloved sweet sleep and rest, not sleeplessness and unrest. Okay, if you find yourself troubled, put on one of my teaching tapes, guaranteed to put you to sleep. Okay, with that monotone I have, puts everybody to bed. Guarantee it. Free of charge. Don't have to go buy any sleeping aids. Pastor Pat, guaranteed to work. <clears throat> the good news is that you'll wake up, your spirit will be hearing it, beginning fed, fortified, and you'll, you'll wake up refreshed. Amen. Reinvigorated. So, that's one of the dots that we'll put in there. Unforgiveness, sleeplessness, that's one dot. How about this one? Not just fear, but fear of loss. Now, this is a big one. In, in this day and age, everybody has a fear of loss. How many times you see people, you know, oh, there's a stock coming out. You better get in on the stock option. And if you don't get on the stock option, you're going to you're gonna be that person who did not buy that first IBM stock and you could be a multimillionaire today. So you get into all this fretfulness, this care, and this worry because you had a fear of loss that if you didn't do it, you'd be, you wouldn't be a millionaire. But that's, a, you know, just one example. I'm talking about fear of losses on everything you do in life. Okay? The fear of loss is greater than the desire for gain. 
And the world system knows that, so they play on that. Everybody's got a desire for gain, okay? And they pursue that, and that's a good thing. But the fear of loss is greater than the desire for gain. Because you wish you had it, and then you try to do everything you can to obtain it. Where all you had to do was rest in God. And let the blessings of God come upon you and overtake you. Again, you're back to, you're out of the rest of God and back into your own works and labor. Okay? Relax. 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 Okay? Let him do it. You don't have a fear of loss. Christ is your su sufficiency. He's your provision. He's your glory. He's your all in all. He's your shepherd God. In fact, you don't have any of that. You've got an oversupply of abundance because he said in John 10, 10, I've given you my, my God kind of life to the overflow, to the overabundance. So you don't have to fear anything. And let me tell you another secret. If you've got a fear of loss, it's the devil behind it. You know why? Because the devil's always the one who's into, he's a compulsive, compulsive, push, 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 get to that, do that, get into that. Spend your money here. Go to that. Get that job. No, not that job. This job. The one that'll be a catastrophe. Okay? Instead of resting. Whenever you feel forced or compelled or pushed into something, put the brakes on and say, now I'm going to not do anything for a week or two. Just because you instigated me into trying to rush into a decision. If God's behind it, it's going to happen. Okay? So don't worry about it. But never do things, then you look back and say, why did I do that? Fear of loss. And it was satanic. There's a satanic force behind that. So that's a dot. That'll be the second dot. How, this is a big one now. All traumas. Now, traumas reside in the soul, not in your spirit. Your spirit is perfect. Made in the image and likeness of God as the spirit of Christ. Okay? Your soul, however, is, is part of your system. You are a triune being. Okay, but it comprises of your mind, will, emotions, it's all of your intellect, it's your sensory perceptions, how you acquire mental information and make perceptions here in this natural world. It's how you contact things here in this perceived world. And your physical body obviously gives you the physical contact of things here and about. But the solical realm is big. <clears throat> and most all of us, unfortunately, and I hate to use this figure, 99 point, probably 9, make all of our decisions based out of solical reasoning and out of our solical faculties, our intellect versus resting or waiting upon our spirit man to give us the right wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and counsel from the Lord. How does that happen? Because we, got, we get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the day. Well, I don't have time for this. I didn't have time for that. I couldn't get to that. I got to postpone this. This has to go over to this day. Now I've got to wait another week. I can't get to it. That's you. Drop down. We're going to put that dot. That's another. That's that dot. Okay? All trauma. That's a trauma. Forcing you to do something. Now, traumas can happen in many shapes, fashion, or forms. You could have a trauma as a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and remembered it. Okay? <clears throat> but had a, you know something happening when you were riding a bike and you toppled and it's something that stuck with you forever could have got a beating from your parents that's a trauma you could have saw a, fam a friend die right in front of your eyes in a car wreck or tragedy or accident or on a deathbed those are all traumas and every time you have a trauma a spirit gets in there and sits on it that causes stress into your life now, you can have all types of emotional trauma from other things. You know, a bad marriage, a bad relationship with people, okay? Arguing back and forth. Every time you argue with somebody back and forth, you're reforcifying the trauma that's already in you or a new one. And those spirits will say, here's some more. Come on, boys. They're back at it again. And only re-strengthening their position of another argument to come. Now, these traumas, um, Katie Zuza said something to the effect that they're tombs. You know, did you ever see a tomb at a cemetery? said that Legion was among the tombs all the time. It was symbolic. But it means that they've set up a memorial inside of your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, that you always remember it. You always go back to it. 
it's almost become a, a perverted comfort zone but it's not healthy for you okay so any emotional stress that you've gone through a divorce okay things that happen within a marriage that aren't healthy one, one spouse doing this one spouse maybe another spouse doing that <clears throat> one might be in drugs drinking alcohol one might be cheating anything like that okay those are traumas those are trauma saints we're going to drop down on that one today and pull them out by the roots all of them see you may say well you know what? i can only remember about this one that's okay while you're taking the bath today to get that scrub that one off you that shower's taking all the other ones and all the other dirt and scrubbing it off you too that's the, what's good about this when you accepted christ as lord and savior he didn't forgive one of your sins he gave you a bath and forgave you of all your sins, past, present, and future. Well, if he did, then what are we doing this for? This is in your soul. You, I told you, your spirit's perfect. These are things that you've accumulated through your lifetime that are troubling you and keeping you off center, off base, not seeing yourself as he is now. Because they pull you back over here, but you're supposed to be think, seeing yourself in Christ here. Perfect. But then it draws you back here, draws you over here. Okay? <clears throat> Another trauma, and I hate to say this to a lot of people, but it's dealing in the arena of procrastination. You just don't do it. You just don't get to it. I, I've got too many things i got to get done. i got to do this, this, and that, but you don't get done what is necessary to get done, like dropping down 10 times a day. Well, I don't have time. Okay, then you don't have time to get delivered then either. Don't tell me that you don't have time. You go home, you shut the door, you stay in your car, or whatever, and you drop down. And you go through this exercise. Why didn't it work the first time? Who knows? Maybe you weren't ready. Maybe you didn't have enough faith. All I know is that you just keep doing it till you get the full breakthrough and deliverance. And you'll see the result. God is faithful. Okay? You know, traumas also will come in many other forms. Uh, an attack from the system. The government coming against you for one reason or another. The shots. I mean, all kinds of traumas that are out there. Amen? Force mandates, those are trauma saints. You get a report, all of a sudden our food supply or our fuel's gone. Oil and gas have been cut off and you can't get to work anymore. You can't feed your family because somehow, somewhere, they're trying to squeeze you into a parameter box where you follow their rules or you don't exist anymore. That's fear, fear of the government and what they're doing with their policy decisions, okay? But that can come under the subset of traumas. Okay. And traumas just aren't things that happen to you. Or maybe a gang chased you down and beat you up. Traumas happen by you witnessing a family friend or member who they may have gotten beat up. Those are traumas too. You just couldn't get to them or save them or help them. Okay. And sometimes traumas, you know, nothing bad could have happened, but it was a bad thing. And it really stuck in you. I'll give you a real short one. Um, in our one home that we had, we had a, a glorious swimming pool in our backyard. And the way we had our system set up, because I had five kids, um, I think down from uh, maybe Deanna, Marissa, and Tony, they generally, we got up in the morning and their wings went on. And we always knew where the kids were. I was particularly that way. I was obsessed, probably too much so. But I always had to know where they were at all times. I was always doing one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. One day, my youngest, Tony, went out, stand, stood around the pool, a little tot at the time. He slipped in and fell in. We didn't put, we didn't have the wings on. So somehow somebody came through the screen door. I don't know if it was Marissa or Deanna or somebody said, well, Tony fell in the pool. And I flew out of the house like a wild man, okay, because Pat did that too, and on one of our trips down in Florida, and I dove into the pool with all our, we're just getting ready for dinner, I went in there with my full, full dress wear. Because my kid's on the line here, I'd do anything for them. Okay? Th those are the love of my life. Alright? So, I got him out there and I yelled at everybody around, you've seen my son drowning in a pool, you didn't do anything? What's wrong with you people? And over there sipping their little, you know, margaritas and everything else. So that's another thing, but that was a trauma, okay? I saved him, but still marked me. Tony come, you know, comes finally, walk, he walks in after I flew out of the house. I go, what happened? 
goes, well, I slipped in a pool. Or somebody said he did. And by the grace of God, he just paddled his way to the steps. You know, anywhere in our pool was over his head. Okay, and he got out miraculously as far as I was concerned. And for the longest time, I never forgot it. I never forgave myself for being so stupid. How could you be so stupid? And, and I, for one second, know where all your kids were. And I'll tell you, I used to, I pretty much knew where they all were all the time. Now, there were times that didn't always happen. You know, I, I, one out of five escaped. Pat was always the one who would like to play hide and go seek behind a car. I called the cops and everything at one time. He was a little tyke. We're on vacation at another time, and he goes and runs off, and he's hiding in somebody's parked car. Who's going to look there? And, you know, in the rear view, you know, wheel well. That was a miracle. Okay? I go, from now on, the ropes go around their neck like a leash. Okay? I wasn't going to have them die on my watch. And so that's how it was. And so those are traumas. Traumas. Great result. And result was fabulous. Great deliverance of the Lord. Praise God for that. But it still put a memorial, a tomb in my spirit. And every time I look at my kids, I, oh, I go back to that for a split second. I say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for saving my babies. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Okay? And every morning and every night when I do my prayers, I always thank the Lord for saving them on those days. You know, and how about parents that got there too late and their kids drowned in a pool? How do you get rid of that trauma? How do you get rid of that one? Oh, drop down. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, drop down. You got to do it. God will meet you at your point of need and give you that deliverance. Okay? It could be another thing. You know, sharing in your children's loss. Things seem so stupid to other people, but they're big to you. My Deanna lost her dog, Trevor. Dog, just a dog, you might say. But it broke all of our hearts. She suffered, and I suffered with her because we're emotionally tied. It's a trauma. It's a trauma, saints. These are the things that I'm talking about that are traumas in life. Okay, I just lost my brother a couple of weeks ago. Another trauma. I blame myself for that. Maybe if I would have been in contact more of this, that, or the other thing, he wouldn't have died like that. So those are tombs, memorials, and traumas in this one soul. Drop down and have the Lord give you relief, purge you out. Does Jesus have those traumas of Tony falling in the pool? No. Then if he doesn't, then I can't. Why should I have them? Okay. All I know is that the angels, I prayed the 91st Psalm every day with my children. They said it with me when we were in our other home from the time they were tykes to the time they left the house. And I played the healing scriptures from Stephen B. Stevens. God answered my, our prayers. And he put an angel over Tony Pat and everybody else and they got delivered and saved. And I praise the Lord for them. Amen? Those are traumas. Good good traumas, but still a trauma. Okay. <clears throat> There's some other traumas that, you know, I'll, one of these days when we get together and we have a private grouping session, I'll tell you some traumas that I had in my life that make your hair stand on end. But God can still, you know, in a drop-down method, still save you. So let's get going on this. <clears throat> this will be the last one and we'll close. Okay? So all traumas, fear for the future. I, I, even though we're done with this today, saints, and we're going to drop down and finish, uh, the tail end ones, because we're not giving it any credence, at the beginning of next week we'll just cover it a little bit more. I want to tell you what fear of the future is all about. I think you sort of know because we talk, touched on it. Again, you know, security for your job. That's a big one. Again, government policy decisions of the future. Shots, digital, currency, climate change, all the CRT stuff. Those are all issues that weigh on our minds or our souls. Your mind is your soul. Okay? So here we go again. <clears throat> Quickly as we close for today. Like put your hands on your tummy, your belly. Close your eyes. See the shafts of light coming out of your hands going inside of your belly. And see the glory from inside of your belly 
press it against your hands like you're sandwiching okay back and forth now see the glory sun a big circle or a Jesus with the brilliance as a noonday sun the countenance and see all those dots okay unforgiveness and sleeplessness is one dot fear of loss is another second dot the third dot all traumas the fourth dot fear of the future okay jobs Government policy decisions, policy decisions, shots, digital, climate change, all that stuff. That's the fourth one. See them horizontally across, and they don't have a chance. I mean, just the brilliance of Jesus Christ has already took them. Jesus has no tolerance for something that he already took away from you, trying to trespass against you. Remember what I said, they're not coming against you, they're coming against him, Jesus himself. So he has no no tolerance, no mercy. He's vicious against these spirits. So he stokes them up and burns them up. So see them losing their constituency, fragmenting, breaking up. Whew. Already got a yawn. See them breaking up. I see them turning gray. See them turning off white. See them beginning almost to where you can't see them anymore because they're blending in with the glory light. And they become like fragmented like sand. Now they've, they're just like a wisp, like flash paper, whoosh, just gone. Yeah, gone. Lord, pull out all traumas, known and unknown. Lord, pull out all unforgiveness that we have towards you, towards God, towards man, towards, you know, anything. Governments, anything. All, all unforgiveness, all offenses, known and unknown. Okay? All sleeplessness out the window. Pull it up by the roots, Lord God. So we have a deep, 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 sweet sleep. Pull up by the roots, Lord God. All fear of loss of any sort. All traumas that we mentioned and probably a million more that we haven't. All of them go in the bath. They're going down the drain. Last dot, fear of the future. Okay. Fear for your finances, your job. All that stuff is covered. The government policies, the shots, digital, C's, C, and all that. So you see all that. Now see those four rivers. One river taken out. This unforgiveness and sleeplessness, rinsing it away by the blood. With the, not only the water of life, but the blood of Christ. See the second river taken out the fear of loss. See the third river taken out all traumas. See the fourth river taking out the fear of the future and all that it encompasses. See it, see it, see it. You're totally washed and clean as Christ is now without any of these issues inside of him. Any of these potential spirits, so are you in this world. Take some deep breaths. And I mean deep ones, not just a shallow one. Deep breaths. Thank you, Lord. And with thanksgiving, remember that's a clincher. Telling the Lord that you're in possession, that you believe it happened. His peace is now coming in and dominating you because you're one with him. You're telling him I'm one with you, so if you don't have it, I don't have it. All that is significant. Thank you, Lord. Keep those breaths going. Deep breaths. Ooh, deep one there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now let the peace of God dominate you. Let it be a note of victory inside of your spirit and your heart and your mind that you that it worked, that it happened, because it did happen. See the Lord plucking all these things up by the roots. Remember the verse I gave you last week. Every plant in you that the Father God has not planted he plucketh up and taketh, out, taketh away. See him taking all these away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, as Christ is, so are we in this world. All the hindrances are gone. So it's more apt for you to believe that. Thank you, Lord. 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 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, saints. Let's get ready for the communion now. And the tithe. And the 91st Psalm. And then we'll have the closing prayer for our service. Hallelujah. Get your communion wafer or just cracker. We use crackers here. Little ones and grape juice for your cup. You can use water if you want. Okay. Now, inside of your souls, I speak forth the heaven, the kingdom of God. I speak redeemed time into all of our souls, yourself, myself. And I speak, Lord God, that we're in this redeemed time now. Amen. Redeemed time. Death has been abolished and everlasting life and immortality flows in us. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Thank you. So your spirit and soul bathe in the blood, bathe in the washing of the water of the word, bathe with the glory of God. See the peace of God dominate your heart and mind. With thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, saints, take this bread in your hand and say this with me, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to drop down and having the Lord Jesus Christ become personally connected, personally responsible to us today. And where he destroyed, consummated, consumed and swallowed up all those evil things and spirits as though they don't exist anymore because they don't. And now everything inside of our soul is white picture, white, perfectly clean, just like a shower taking all the dirt off or a bath, cleaning us utterly. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is the bath. He clean, cleansed us with his glory, light. Cleanses us with his blood. He cleanses us with the rivers of water of life. Hallelujah. We stand before you, Lord God, for the perfect wholeness of our physical bodies. We walk in that divine healing, that divine health, as you are now in perfect genetic salvation and a state of perfectness. So are we in you in this world. We have your genetic salvations in every organ, tissue, and cell, DNA, genes. In fact, we also have your prime of life. <clears throat> as you are now with prime of life, so are we in this world, and every organ, tissue, and cell of our bodies, and skin, and hair, everything about us conforms to the prime of life at 33 and a half years old, like Jesus is today. That's you. <clears throat> That's the real you. Any of you who have gone through any catastrophic illnesses, okay, heart attack, stroke, or whatever, you are healed, you are healed, you are healed as he is now. As Jesus, if he doesn't have it, you cannot have it, and therefore you do not have it, period. That is absolute truth. That is absolute reality. <coughs> this bread represents, as you ingest it, you're ingesting it through your whole body by faith. As this thing breaks up inside of your system, it touches every organ and cell in your DNA. And it brings that perfect wholeness and healing that this whole drop-down thing that we just did and what we enunciate right now in Jesus' name. Our youth is renewed day by day, and our body parts are not grow older whatsoever. Why? Because we're one with the one who is what? The Redeemer of our life. The Ancient of Days, Jesus Christ himself. If you believe that, as I do, you may partake of the bread right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
saying to you, take this cup and say this with me, Father, in Jesus' name. And this cup, Lord God, that sits before your mercy seat is an everlasting reminder of the covenants of Almighty God that we are sinless before you. The blood says so. It makes petition for us, advocates for us, intercedes for us. Amen. Tell them the throne constantly. They are perfect. They're just like Jesus. They are without sin. They are without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. They are holy, unreprovable, unblameable in your sight. That's what the blood says. So, Father, we see ourselves in this blood, in Christ. Every time you say you're in Christ, you're saying you are in Him as He is now. Perfect. Delivered. Okay? Swept and garnished, right? All those things are cast out, bound, and loosened into a dry and desert spot, right? That we've done. Amen. You're free, saints. You're free. And finally, we are in his righteousness. We're in his sinlessness. Amen. Free. We're in his innocence. That blood covers our eyes, nose, mouth, lips, fingers, and hands. Protects us from COVID issues, variants, any other respiratory issues, known and unknown, that are out there. It covers every t work, everything that we've ever done or touched in our lives. The evil one sees that holy blood of the Son of the living God, and he passes over respectfully, for he honors the blood. He leaves. And so it touches every part of our life and everything in our life. So it touches your car, your roads, car parts, everything that's touched by the blood. And Father, because of all that, we rest in your provision of excellence. We, we see ourselves perfect in Christ as he is now, and we give you the thanksgiving, praise, and honor for this eternal blood that eternally cleanses us of all sin, past, present, and future, forever. We are forever marked by this blood, and thank God for it. We give you the thanksgiving, praise, and honor for it, Father, now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May partake of the cup. Saints, get ready your tithe and offerings. We may bless them with you. Hallelujah. And while you're waiting for that, turn to the 91st Psalm in your Bible or in your tablet, in your pads. For those of you on YouTube, you'll have to do that. Those in our Zoom room, which I invite everybody that's listening on YouTube to go into our Zoom room, you'll see it on the screen. And you'll be able to recite it with us in a moment. Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise God forevermore. God is good, right, saints? All right. Let's pray with, together with me, Father, in Jesus' name. We take this basket of our tithes and offerings to the Father God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. To the altar, Lord God, of God Almighty Himself, and lay it before Him, and say unto them that you are the apostle and high priest over our words and confession, <clears throat> after the order of Melchizedek. You are the receiver and the recipient of the tithe. Therefore, we receive a thousandfold blessing and a thousandfold return of all this giving now, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that the silver, gold, and cattle of a thousand hills are ours today. The wealth of the wicked has been exchanged for us to just right now and today. And all debt, mortgage debt, credit card debt, school debt, college debt, all of it's gone. Why? Because Jesus doesn't have it. As he is now without it, neither are you with it today in this world. We speak unto our angels, and time angels, wealth transfer angels, to go out into the north, east, south, and west from expected and unexpected sources, and bring in the great financial flow so that we may have more than enough in our last days, not just for ourselves, <coughs> but for other people throughout the world, so we may get the gospel touching every person, Lord. We thank you that these angels do a spectacular job, and we know that they do. And I say unto thee, money come unto me now, money come unto all of us now, and money comes to you now all the days of your life. Now receive it. I'm telling you to receive it. Take it. You have to take things, okay? You go, That's mine. I take it. And walk in that freedom of that great 
billionaire wealth transfer that God has in store for us. Hallelujah, saints. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Okay. Now we're going to do the 91st Psalm here. Kindly turn to it. Be on your screen in the Zoom room in a second. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise His holy name. Praise His holy name. Here we go. We who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, who lodge, abide, and stand under the shadow of the Almighty. We do say the Lord, He is our refuge, my fortress, and my God, in Him will I trust. Surely has delivered us from the snare of the fowler, and from the noise and pestilence. He's covered us with His feathers, and under His wings do we trust. His truth is our shield and buckler. We're not afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the peasant that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but shall never come nigh us. All with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked, because we've made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the Most High, our habitation. There shall no evil befall us, neither any plague come nigh our dwelling. For he has given his mighty angels charge over us, to keep us in all thy ways. They shall bear us up in their hands, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the ad, our young lion and dragon, shall we trample under feet, treading upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, <clears throat> nothing shall by any means hurt us. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore have I delivered him. I have set him on high, because he had known my name. He's called upon me, and I have answered him. I am with him in trouble. I do deliver them and honor him. What long life do I satisfy them, and <clears throat> show them my continued, ongoing, everlasting, perpetual, and eternal salvation, which is our Jesus. It's our health, healing, wholeness, soundness, deliverance, preservation, safety and assurance, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Hallelujah, saints. Praise God. I trust this was a great service for you today. Um, this drop-down thing was great. Um, you know, send us some testimonies on some of the mighty and marvelous things and the miracles that the Lord gave you today. Hallelujah. And we will rejoice and exalt with you and praise God for such a mighty deliverance. Hallelujah. Go over the message oftentimes so we can review this and drop down many, many, many times this week and go over the message, saints. Now let me do a prayer for you for this week. Father, as the saints depart from this service, here and also in the Zoom room and also in the YouTube room throughout the world, wherever they go, whether they walk or drive or however mode of travel they have, they are covered with the blood of Jesus from top to bottom, the top of the car, to the up to the top, underneath, in front, behind, the sides of the car, or themselves. And also, Lord God, that the hand of God, the angels of God, the glory of God, and His mercies, tender mercies, and traveling mercies are with us, and they never leave us. It's just not for us, but it's also for the unrighteous. For the heathen been given unto us is our inheritance. And I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord God, that we go through the week in the power of your spirit, more freer than ever before. You should be sensing that already. And also under the power of the glory of God's you know, miracle working power. I want miracle saints in your lives demonstrated over and over on purpose and on demand. And Father, that they walk in health, they walk in victory, they walk in triumph, they walk in success, they walk in prosperity. And Father, they are very astute to what is happening in and around them, and they immediately take authority over it and break the power of the devil on anything that is evil that is trying to control us in our country and throughout this world. We praise you, Lord, for the saints. We thank you, Lord, for them. <clears throat> I give you all the praise, honor, and glory for their benefit, for their success, and their blessing, Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, saints. This concludes our service. We want to let you know that we love you. Thank you so much for being a part of our lives and letting us be your church family, allowing us to come into your homes and um, letting us pray with you also. We you who have prayer, send it to me, email it to me, text me, however, and we will lift you up. That's what we do. And I want to let you know that 
Um, we thank you for your diligence. We thank you for you and your prayers and support, okay? Financial support has blessed us too. Without it, <clears throat> I doubt we'd be here. But thank God for you. Thank God for the Lord. Alrighty, so until we meet again next week, may God's best be upon you. Stay in his presence, peace, and rest. Remember that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Amen, amen. Have a blessed week, saints. Bye-bye now.